Hey, I am here talking with who? Steve Fisher. Michael Darty. And you guys, uh, you guys made a film. Tell me a little bit about this. What is it? Uh, Broncos Redemption. It's a fan film for charity. And uh, Mike's director and a writer. Want to give the uh, so it's a uh, Joss Whedon inspired Serenity fan made sequel uh, where we're trying to raise money for five charities as well. So it's feature length, and um, it was completely crowdsourced. So that's really interesting. I mean, fan fiction's been around for a while, but to actually continue the story and essentially get the blessing of, was it the director or producer? Who'd you get the blessing from? Uh, Joss Whedon himself, the writer, director, creator of Firefly and Serenity. Excellent. So uh, tell me, how did this come about? Why did you do it? And how did you actually amass this crowd? Um, back in 2008, Steve said to me, uh, have you ever thought of doing a Firefly fan film? And that's kind of where it started from there. We went to Dragon Con in 2008 asked the Firefly fans if it's something they're interested in, got a resounding yes, and immediately started into work. Uh, in November, created a Twitter and Facebook group, grew quickly to about 500 followers on each, started inviting people out to the table read, letting them know that we were uh, needing extras and some help on the set, and about 160 plus people showed up from all over the United States, converging on a little front, uh, place called Frontier Town in, in Berlin, Maryland, uh, for filming. And then since then, we have continually amassed anywhere from uh, 40 to 82 people per weekend to help us out with the project. Okay, so how did you actually go through the actual coordination of doing that? I mean, what tools did you use? How did you actually coordinate all that? Um, Facebook and Twitter, like, yeah, that's yeah. the main ones. Go. Uh, pretty much everything we used is, is available to everybody. It's the big three, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and uh, maybe a little bit of a right here and there. Mm -hmm. So then uh, just started communicating and staying engaged with the public the entire time and keeping them abreast and, and keeping them engaged and making them feel like it's their movie not and not ours. And did you actually create a blog or something of the whole process of what went on? A little bit. We, cre we created a podcast, kept people up to date. We have a website that's on a WordPress platform that you know we've been updating and going along the way. But mainly interacting through social media, directly through Twitter and Facebook. And the thing that we've got a resounding response is, is that they know that they're actually interacting with us yeah. and not just, you know, a movie. So they, there's a more, greater personal connection and greater personal investment into the process than just, hey, I'm helping out this independent fan film. And you never made a film before, did you? No, well, I'd help out on, like, friends, local stuff that me never saw the light of day, but uh, directing or writing something of this nature or this size, never. So what did you learn? I mean, when you were starting this project, I'm sure you had no idea what you were getting into. <laughs> oh, the big joke. Okay, so give me, give me an idea of some of the things that really were just unexpected. Uh, we got a really great opportunity. We shot on a red one, and um, we were expecting to have the camera the entire time, and about halfway through the filming, the guy sold the camera and disappeared. So red ones are not common in the state of Maryland, nor are they cheap and easy to find. So Steve did an amazing call out on Twitter, found a guy who had just had a couple of them and was getting ready to rent them. So we got an, a really awesome deal. Uh, basically two days for the price of one. He gets to promote that he has uh, using the product, using the red cameras, and we kept on filming. Um, we had a location that we had gotten all the permissions and blessings of, of the guy that uh, ran the location show up, and then the police let us know that we can't be there because we don't have a permit. And uh, the guy, you know, got on the phone with the guy, and he's like, oh, I thought you were doing a photo shoot, not a movie. Sorry, can you come back in three weeks? And at that point, we already had people from, like, Massachusetts and New Hampshire there. So there's no way we could get them to leave and come back. So the, one of the cops that showed up happened to be a Firefly fan, made a few calls, and found us a new location. So within an hour and a half, we changed locations, and it was like nothing had ever happened. That's awesome. Okay, so how is this film going to be distributed? It's very soon, right? Uh, that's correct. It's going to be on DVD, and the, the model is because we're doing this for charity. You take the uh, DVD as a, as a thank you for donating $20 to the project, and we'll be putting the, uh, film, <laughs> we'll be putting the film out hopefully and online as well. It premieres at Labor Day weekend. It's all right. You keep talking. Premieres Labor Day weekend at... <laughs> we need more cowbell. Yeah. <laughs> you can just cut that one. So, the film premieres Labor Day weekend at Dragon Con in Atlanta. It's also going to be online with Ustream as their sponsor, and they're going to be doing a global release and premiere so everyone, the whole world can share in it. So, September 4th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check out our website and our Facebook fan page, which you can get to from our website, browncoatsmovie.com.